Well, the Florida Gators almost pulled off the upset at number nine, Missouri, on Saturday night. A win would have made Florida bowl eligible and would have been the biggest road win of Napier's tenure. Before we get going, I want to talk about a couple things. First, Graham Mertz. I'm going to talk about him more later, but what a warrior. My heart absolutely goes out to him today. Graham, thank you for everything that you gave our program this year. I don't know how you watch him on the field and you just you see anything but a dog. This guy has fought relentlessly for the Gators this year. Nobody wanted him out of the portal. Everybody thought it was a poor eval, a bad pickup. And it's hard to even imagine where the Gators would be had he not come to Florida for this season. So hats off to Graham Mertz. We're going to talk about it more. Heart breaks for him over this injury, but I know he's going to be back better than ever. Also want to talk a little bit about some of the tweets that you guys sent me. Some of the DMs made a comment that this game was fun, that I didn't like the outcome, didn't like the scoreboard, but this game was fun. A lot of you told me it wasn't. I don't know how objectively you watched this game on Saturday night and you didn't have fun. That was a battle. Florida was in it to the end. There was losses earlier in the season where terrible special teams mistakes or play calling or just dumb penalties continually cost Florida. And there were games where we just got blown out. This was none of those things. And it was fun. So I don't need a participation trophy. I don't need a silver lining. But if you didn't watch on Saturday night and had a good time right up until the end, I don't know what that says about you, but this was fun as a fan of college football. Now, where did the Gators go wrong? Um, I think you got to start with tackling, right? Florida's tackling was atrocious again. Did you see the play where our safety got run over by the wide receiver? Essentially bounces right off of him, right? Most safeties are licking their lips at that opportunity. Could you imagine Major Wright, Ahmad Black, some of those guys back from our glory days with that opportunity? That wide receiver might have been on the way to the hospital. The wide receiver is completely extended. His ribs are fully extended. Exposed. That means there's no risk of targeting. When you tackle what is beat into your heads from the day you put pads on is that you wrap up and you drive your feet. You keep running through the tackle. Don't slow down. Our safety did none of those things. He didn't wrap up and he just kind of crumbled, dropped to the ground. He looks like someone who had never tackled before. I felt like if I threw my nine-year-old out there and said, hey, go tackle that guy, that's pretty much what she would look like. So how does this happen? One of two things is going through his head based on how the play progressed. One, don't go high because you might get a targeting call. Or two, this is going to hurt me. Those are the only two thoughts that make sense for the outcome of that play. Here's the problem. One, targeting's not a risk. He was fully extended and he's taller than you. Two, stop. You are an SEC safety. It should never be a thought in your head that I might get hurt. This might hurt. No, you are a starting SEC safety. Let's say you're trying to tackle Calvin Johnson. He's bigger than you are, right? So hitting him midsection could hurt or I could bounce off of him. I really don't want anybody playing D1 football that is scared of getting hurt, but here we are. So what do I do? I go lower. What happens when you hit a fully extended Calvin Johnson at the shins and you keep driving? You don't stop. He falls to the ground. That's what needed to happen on that play. But that play is kind of a microcosm for Florida's tackling issues this year. At the beginning of the season, some of us, including myself, were fooled into thinking that our tackling issues had improved a little bit. I think in reality, it's that the back half of our schedule is a lot harder than the 
beginning of our schedule. So our defense looked a little bit better at the beginning of the year than they actually are. I don't know that I believe the defense is regressing, but I don't believe the defense is really developing either. That's a problem for sure. Let's continue to talk about the defense. Let's talk about that fourth and 17. Do you know when Florida had that fourth and 17 that there was a 99.9% chance, according to ESPN's game cast, of Florida winning? 99.9. The last time that happened was back in October when all Miami needed to do was kneel the football and they get out with a W. Instead, they got cute. They handed the ball off. They ended up losing the game. 99.9% chance of winning is where Florida was sitting at, at this fourth and 17. There was a timeout called prior to this play. The defensive coaching staff should have told our players, back up, make sure there are not any soft spots over you, which that's exactly what ended up happening during the play, a soft spot. From a quarterback perspective, if a linebacker is lined up five or six yards off the ball. And I'm looking at my target, my very best wide receiver. I know that pretty quickly he's going to get past them. And then there's going to be a soft spot between the linebackers and the DBs. But if your linebackers are lined up, let's say 13 yards off the ball and your DBs are sitting at 17 yards off the ball, or honestly, even 20 yards off the ball. So that at that point, all they have to do is step up. The quarterback has only two options. One, throw it underneath, which doesn't help him because it's short of the first down. You're then relying on your players to be able to make a play after that, which is something I rant about our our third and fourth downs on this channel on a regular basis. Or two, throwing it over past the DBs, which is also a crapshoot. You've taken away that soft spot in the middle, right at that 17 mark, if your linebackers drop back. There was zero reason for them to be as close to the ball as they were. Before the ball was snapped, we knew that play was going to get yardage because of where our defense is lined up. It's unacceptable. It really is unacceptable given the fact that there was a timeout right before there. Austin Armstrong had the opportunity to talk to his defense right there to tell them what they needed to do differently to save this play. But I don't think it falls solely on Austin Armstrong, even though he gets, you know, the bulk of the blame there. Where was the general? Why was Napier not screaming at Armstrong to have his guys back up. Your head coach needs to be situationally aware. And he wasn't in that moment. I think we can talk a lot about missed tackles, bad angles, poor effort given on defense. But this went wrong with play calling. This went wrong because our players were put in a poor position to succeed. This went wrong before the ball was snapped. It was a major reason why Florida lost. There's another big killer in my mind, um, and that would be the handoff fumble. And then Missouri taking it to the house the very next play. This is Max Brown's fault, but it's tricky, okay? Quarterbacks get comfortable handing off to the guys that they practice with every day. Graham Mertz knows exactly where ETN's mesh spot is. That's the sweet spot where he wants the ball. Brown hit ETN's elbow. So what that tells me is the running back that he practices with has a higher mesh point. And that's why as a quarterback, you have got to turn and put the ball in his belly button. It avoids this kind of catastrophic mistake. But That's also repetition. And we're talking about a guy who has seen so little live game action. It's not even funny. I still have to hand it to Max Brown. And I think Gator fans everywhere should hand it to him too. He did a phenomenal job stepping in. And I think he gets all the praise in the world for orchestrating those two fourth quarter drives. It is a hostile environment against, honestly, 
a pretty good defense. It honestly makes me wonder why we didn't use Brown as kind of a change of pace quarterback at other points during the season. If you are struggling to get your running game going, but you have a dual threat quarterback back there, it makes it so much harder to defend, which is exactly what we saw when he went in. Missouri was absolutely not prepared for a running quarterback. And they tried to make adjustments, but you saw our running game suddenly open up. And that's because Max Brown has wheels too. So it's interesting to me that with as much talent as we saw from him on Saturday night, as much poise that we haven't seen him in parts earlier in the year. And that's not a knock on Graham Mertz. Graham Mertz has been phenomenal for the Gators, but there were points in this season where this offense could just not get going. And Max Brown might've been able to help in that department. Do you want to talk about Graham Mertz a little bit? Non-displaced fracture of his collarbone. I would assume that means he's done for the season. Napier said in his press conference that they're going to need another set of x-rays before they determine if he needs surgery or not. He thinks that it's pointing towards him not needing surgery, which is obviously great news for Graham Mertz. But man, does he have that dog in him or what? Max Brown came in to replace him. And outside of that botched handoff that resulted in the turnover, he was great too. He led two fourth quarter comeback drives. I don't know that you can ask a whole lot more from an offense that has a hodgepodge offensive line. There's injuries all over the place. I don't know that you can ask more out of Florida's offense than what they have been doing the last few weeks. They did enough to give the Gators a chance to win. They did enough against LSU. They did enough against Arkansas. It is hard to say enough good things about Mertz and Brown and Etienne and Johnson and Pearsall and Wilson and Jackson and others on that offense. The offensive line is going to need to get better, but it's a patchwork offensive line right now. I don't know that Florida has started the same five in a single game this entire season. They're doing what they can with what they have. And the offense has has been impressive. They've scored enough points to win in recent games. The Gators did lose the turnover battle once again, which is obviously not a stat that you want to be on the losing end of. Most of the time, if you lose the turnover battle, you also lose the game. But they did put up 500 yards of offense, which is pretty impressive against a Missouri defense who honestly has been good. So... What's missing from this team? There's not a huge difference between 10 and 2 and 6 and 6 if you don't find ways to win, if you don't know how to win. Contrary to popular belief, we have talent. This talent is young. They're inexperienced. They're learning on the job, but it's there. And there's more on the way. If this team knew how to win, we could have at least two to three more games in the W column. Think about Utah. Think about Arkansas. Obviously, this Missouri game. Honestly, even LSU. If Florida knew how to close, how to win these games, this season looks incredibly different. It's not hard to find how there could have been eight or nine wins on this schedule had they been able to close some of these games. This team has heart, they have fight, but they don't know how to win. And that's a hard thing to explain. Everybody wants to win, right? There, Every person on that team wants to win when they step foot on the field. We are seeing fight. And what I mean by that is they are not giving up. I don't think we're seeing relentless effort on every single play, particularly on defense. I think we are on offense. But that's different than having heart and having fight, right? But the relentless effort, the refusal to quit in the moment of the play is what is missing from this team. They don't know how to win. Urban Meyer used to say, give four to six seconds of relentless effort on every single play and you won't lose. 
And I believe that. I think that's true. And that's what's missing from this defense. And you know what? Winning is contagious. Once you know how to win, you know what it feels like to close on these close games. It's a snowball effect. You win one, you're probably going to win the next one. It's contagious. This team has to figure that out. That has to start with Billy Napier. He has to figure out a way to get that relentless effort out of this team. He has to figure out a way how to get over that hump. But honestly, guys, I am encouraged by what I see out of these young players. I am encouraged by the fact that they are fighting to the last second in all of these games. Think about Arkansas. Think about LSU. Think about this one. No one quit. To me, that is a nod to Billy Napier. That speaks to culture. That speaks to what you're building in the locker room. That tells me the foundation is strong. The talent is either there and young or on its way. This team will get better. They need that X factor. They need to figure out how to win these close games. I was excited that when I... that. There was no major coaching mistakes on offense. I felt like the game was called pretty well. I felt like the momentum, you know, sometimes it feels like Napier doesn't have a great feel for the game and he can sometimes call things that kill momentum. I didn't really feel like that happened. I think he honestly was pretty ballsy for Napier when he throws Brown out there and then allows him to pass on his very first play. I think that there's some growth happening there. I still think Florida needs an offensive coordinator. I'm on that train in this offseason. But Florida's offense is starting to make less mistakes. I'm giving them a pass on procedural procedural penalties on the offensive line this week. Everybody was playing in a different position. I think they did what they could with what they had. But it helps keep you in games when you don't make boneheaded mistakes. And listen, I know you're frustrated. I am too. (laughs) Just be thankful you don't have to come on here and, uh, you know, chat with 10,000 people watching you after a loss and you just get to watch me do it instead. It's FSU week. It's bowl eligibility week. We're going to talk about it all week long and try and finish this thing on a high note. Backup versus backup. This is going to be a good week, guys. Thanks for tuning in and go Gators.